Hello. Welcome to our SOS Heritage Online course. The training program, as the name suggests, deals with cultural heritage protection in different catastrophes, different calamitous events, but also day-to-day -day situations that might threaten our cultural heritage, movable or immovable heritage. I'm going to give you a very brief introduction in what is cultural heritage as a start, as a kickoff for this program. There are two names out there that are used synonymously sometimes, cultural heritage and cultural property. We have here, as ICOM was phrased in 2002, cultural heritage as an expression of the ways of living developed by a community and passed on from generation to generation, including customs, practices, places, objects, artistic values, expressions. And cultural heritage is often expressed as either intangible or tangible cultural heritage. So tangible cultural heritage is very often called cultural property, and that can be movable or immovable. The customs, practices, artistic expressions that were mentioned before, citing ICOMOS, they would fall into the category of intangible heritage. And intangible heritage is intrinsic to people, it's even much more connected to people than tangible heritage is. But please keep in mind that all cultural heritage is somehow connected to the people it belongs to, the people who created it, the people living with it, because cultural heritage without the people simply doesn't work. But in this lecture and in the course per se, we're going to stick more with the movable part of cultural heritage and the immovable part of cultural heritage, so the tangible heritage. Cultural property is defined as cultural property in the Hague Convention of 1954. So if you're talking about cultural property, it's very often that we're referring to the Hague Convention of 1954, which is the Hague Convention um, for protecting cultural heritage, cultural property during armed conflict. And in this convention, cultural property is defined as movable or immovable property of great importance to the cultural heritage of every people, such as monuments of architecture, art or history, whether religious or secular. Archaeological sites, groups of buildings which as a whole are of historical or artistic interest, works of art, manuscripts, books and other objects of artistic, historical or archaeological interest as well as scientific collections and important collections of books or archives or of reproductions of the property defined above. It's also buildings whose main and effective purpose it is to preserve or exhibit the movable cultural property defined above, such as museums, large libraries and depositories of archives and refugees intended to shelter in the event of armed conflict, the movable cultural property defined above and centers containing a large amount of cultural property as defined above in A and B, which are known as centers containing monuments. That's what the Hague Convention 1954 says about cultural property and its definition. And we have the UNESCO 1970 Convention, which is the Convention on the Means of Prohibiting and Preventing the Illicit Import, Export and Transfer of Ownership of Cultural Property. As of 2023, it has this convention has 143 state parties as members. And this convention goes into more depth when it comes to defining what cultural heritage, movable cultural heritage actually is. We have rare collections and specimens of fauna, flora, minerals and anatomy and objects of paleontological interest. Property relating to history including the history of science and technology and military and social history, to the life of national leaders, thinkers, scientists and artists, and to events of national importance. Products of archaeological excavations, including regular and clandestine excavations, or of archaeological discoveries. Elements of artistic or historical monuments or archaeological sites which have been dismembered, Antiquities more than 100 years old, such as inscriptions, coins, or engraved seals. 
objects of ethnological interest, property of artistic interest, such as pictures, paintings, drawings produced entirely by hand on any support and in any material, excluding industrial designs and manufactured articles decorated by hand. Original works of statuary art and sculpture in any material, original engravings, prints and lithographs, original artistic assemblages and montages in any material, rare manuscripts and incunabula, old books, documents and publications of special interest, historical, artistic, scientific, literary, etc., singly or in collections, postage, revenue and similar stamps, simply or in collections. Archives including sound, photographic and cinematographic archives, articles of furniture, more than 100 years old, and old musical instruments. So that is a huge definition already of what cultural property or movable cultural heritage categories can be. But it's even more. This is to give you a very basic, basic idea of what we're talking about in this course. European Union has defined categories of cultural heritage in 2023. And again, we have here material and immaterial um, as tangible and intangible. Before uh, material or tangible, we have movable, immovable cultural heritage, and we have archaeological sites, especially mentioned there. And to kind of round this off, I have put together this slide. Um, which shows different categories of cultural heritage, um, non-exhaustive, of course, and not so much saying um, things about cultural heritage and its protection and meaning, but more about the person that uh, put it together, collected the picture on the slides, which was me. Um, so we have uh, there an ancient Greek vase. We have the old uh, city of Dubrovnik. We have the castle Neuschwanstein in Germany. We have folklore dances, manuscripts. We have a painting and we have a famous tulip landscape in the Netherlands, all parts of cultural heritage, of local cultural heritage, but also of the um, heritage of all peoples. And it was also interesting, since we're talking about um, uh, state parties and conventions, is to have a look at how many state parties signed which convention. We've mentioned the Hague Convention 1954, which has two protocols, um, incidentally, the first one from 1954 as well, and the second one from 1999. Um, and uh, the Hague Convention per se was signed by um, 134 state parties or ratified um, as of 2023. The two uh, protocols, first one from 1954, second one from 1999, um, have not been ratified by as many um, state parties then we have the UNESCO uh, 1970 convention, which we've already touched upon, that's uh, signed by 143 uh, nation states. And then we have UNESCO World Heritage Convention, which we haven't managed, mentioned so far, which is coming up. Um, and this one has actually been ratified by 195 state parties. So this is the largest of those conventions um, pertaining to cultural heritage and somehow also its protection. And what makes that one special is that uh, it doesn't um, diminish the sovereignty of the nations of the state parties who signed it in any way. That's what might explain why there were so many state parties actually ratifying their program. So these are basically the legal conventions, the main legal conventions on an international basis, um, humanitarian law uh, covering the, the topic of cultural heritage and also its protection. Continuing with UNESCO World Heritage, um, as kind of the top of the pyramid, uh, as the, the highest level cultural heritage on an international basis can get. But also there's natural heritage and there's mixed uh, heritage, cultural and natural heritage mixed. As of 2023, um, there are 1,199 properties uh, listed as UNESCO World Heritage. 48 of them are transboundary. Um, as I said, out of those 195 uh, states that have ratified the convention, 168 state parties have actually properties listed as UNESCO World Heritage. And um, central for this UNESCO World Heritage is that each of those sites must have an outstanding universal value, OUV, 
And this outstanding universal value consists of 10 criteria of which at least one needs to be fulfilled. Here in this map, we see the dots all around the globe, um, showing us where these UNESCO World Heritage properties lie. And what we see there already is that there are red and green dots. The green dots are safe, so to say, and the red ones are in danger and some of them even on what is called a red list, um, which means that if they continue to be damaged or destroyed, uh, they might be taken off this uh, UNESCO World Heritage list. So we see that there are certain regions in the world where it's actually um, very important to protect cultural heritage. I mean, it's important to protect cultural heritage everywhere, but those are in in more need at the moment, if we can phrase it that way. And coming to the end of this introductory um, lesson, we can ask ourselves which criteria do make cultural heritage important. And I've brought four main boxes. There are many more criteria out there that make cultural heritage important. You can think about that yourself. You will come up with many more uh, words and topics than here, but this is a kind of kickoff and start. There's a box of memory linked to cultural heritage, memory, identity, history, pride, dignity, personal, but also of peoples. There's an economy and tourism value we can put on cultural heritage. But there's also different perception of cultural heritage. What heritage is important to whom? Why is it important? Which history can be done or undone by emphasizing a particular cultural heritage. And it cultural heritage has a huge potential of manipulation as well, and we're talking politics here. And then the last box I brought here is the yellow one about monetary value linked to theft of cultural heritage, illicit trafficking, looting, and the whole topic of illicit uh, trade of cultural heritage. That is one of the biggest threats to cultural heritage in the 21st century still. Talking about um, memory um, and identity and history, pride and dignity, there's a great um, movie out there, The Destruction of Memory. Um, you, you see the link here on the on the screen. We've also put the link for you in the um, uh, additional learning material so that you can have a look at the trailer, at least of the video, to get some um, interviews and first-hand sources talking about the destruction of memory, what it actually means to lose cultural heritage, to lose part of your history. So stay tuned, um, look forward to the upcoming modules, upcoming lessons, and don't forget to check out the additional reading materials that we've added to the lessons um, in order to give you the possibility to get into more depth of the different topics.